I think storytelling was the first love language I ever was introduced to. In Navajo, the name that I have is Halne'e, which is literally a storyteller. Stories are survival. They definitely have been for my family. Just how they were told to me, how they were carried from a relative to another. Storytelling keeps our origins alive. They're living, breathing parts of us. Uh, my name is Kinsale Drake, and I tell stories with poetry and the tools that have been passed down to me. Sam today is a 70s superstar, like she saw in that photo of her mama as a little girl. We will argue about the more beautiful mama, argue to tears, just to be kids, because we want to grow into these women. Poetry in particular, I just really like it. It makes me feel something in a way where I read a good poem and I'm like, that's a good poem. I want to make somebody feel the way that I'm feeling right now. Poetry, it is whatever you make of it, because it can't be pinned down. It's everything it, it wants to be. And I wish more people knew that. I grew up experiencing a lot of racism, a lot of sexism. It made me stop sharing things. I felt really alone as a kid, and I just kept it bottled up inside. And that was what writing did for me. I had an outlet where I could talk about that, and I could talk about you know, my identity. I never saw someone who looked like me or had a family like mine represented. I started writing myself and people like me into books. Hi everyone, it's Kinsale here with Indian Girls Book Club. Indian Girls Book Club is something that I wanted to have as a little girl. I just wanted people to talk to about books. And so with Indian Girls Book Club, it's just the feeling of having a shared space and shared community where you can talk about that and not have to explain yourself to somebody. Native stereotypes are like still very real. The the eco-Indian, the noble savage, the ignoble savage, they just have been like reborn in different ways. It is really uncommon to see accurate and positive depictions of native peoples in mainstream media. There's so many native authors that are publishing stuff, it's just you have to find it and you have to center it. The people in the club have access to those stories, they can feel confident and represented, they can find a whole diverse array of, you know, what it is to be native through these stories. It's even in waves of native literature that have happened, there hasn't always been an inclusiveness of like queer voices or Afro-Indigenous voices, and I want people to know that they can be represented in a, in a book club like that. I really want young people to have resources where they can get their own words published. It's about getting their voices out there too. Community was the reason I kept writing when I felt so alienated and lost, and community is something that keeps a lot of people's writing alive. Louise Erdrich was the first native writer I really connected with, and probably the reason why I'm a poet. I read The Roundhouse. It changed everything. It changed how I could talk about native women. Also talking about contemporary issues, because so often native peoples are confined to or delegated to a past. And so having that vocabulary, I had a way of beginning my journey as a writer and as a poet, specifically trying to delve into my family histories and my stories. And so I think it was that intertwining of the very personal with broader issues of social importance that poetry allowed me to unite. None of my ancestors are on the radio. None of my ancestors are, but my sister refurbished an 8-track and I want Buffy in her purest form. Everything I do is for that little girl that I was. Even if one person relates to or even just feels a little bit seen by something that I'm writing, that's been the most important part of publishing my work for me is the community that's come from sharing my words. Women being in charge of their narratives is everything. There is no one women's literature and there's no one women's history and there's no one group of women's voices. That's why hearing everyone matters. It means taking care of one another, valuing each other's voices, ensuring that future generations and future women feel inspired, feel that they have a place there. I come from a matriarchy. Dene people, through my mother, like we belong just as much as anyone else. We make change, we have our own voices. We have a total right to share them the way we want to be heard and the way we want to tell them.